the TLDW. This card had a PEX reset problem, coupled with a missing MLCC for the second PCI lane. And all of this was detected at the visual inspection step. Like all repair videos, it all started with an ad. The seller mentioned that he picked up the card from a friend's PC and that the card did not work for an unknown reason. When the card arrived, I took a look at it and first noticed the missing MLCC for the second PCI lane. Somewhat in the same region, I noticed two sets of pads that looked like their components got ripped out. One of the pads in question was leading to one of the PCIe fingers, the reset, so I had high hopes that this was the issue with the card. Still, I went on and did the usual resistance measurements, 12 and 3.3 volts between the PCIe fingers and ground, then between each test point, 1.8 volt, 5 volt, memory VDD and GPU VDD, 1 volt PEX and ground, and everything measured fine. I then switched to diode mode and went on to measure the forward voltage drop for the PCI lanes, and I got open loop. Um, my heart sank a bit and switched to ohm meter, and I got measurements of 500k ohms. Thing is, all lanes measured the same, so my fear diminished a bit. I then remember that I also have another GT1030, and although the KFA2 uses GDDR5, the GPUs should be the same. And true enough, the KF2 PCI lanes measured identical to the ASUS DDR4 one. Feeling a bit more reassured, I then looked up a few schematics for the PEX reset circuitry, and what I found was this. An AND gate used as a buffer and a 0 ohm resistor more or less shorting the said gate? I suspected that the buffering is more or less optional and there were no indications on the ASUS board that the AND gate was ever present. And while the KF2 board did have it, I went on to check the reset circuitry on the OMG TX960 board that I use for parts. And lo and behold, that board only had the 0 ohm resistor, passing the PEX reset without any buffering to the GPU. At that point, I decided that at first add the missing components, the 0.1 microfadded MLCC for the second PCI lane and the 0 ohm resistor to pass the PEX reset, before powering up the card. As for the source of those components, well, of course, the good old donor board, the same OEM GTX 960. I used the same method, use a drop of liquid flux to position the tiny component easier, then use hot air to do the soldering. I decided against using a tiny aluminum heatsink for a quick test, and simply reassembled the card using a bit of MX4 as thermal paste. I slotted the card in the homemade test rig, then pressed the power button. I was quickly greeted with a green light on the monitor and shortly after with a boot screen from the motherboard. I powered everything off, then grabbed the card and put it in the Z230. and drivers installed. And heaven ran fine. And games ran fine. Truly one of the easiest fixes. <laughs>